Hello everybody, this is Bodrich. Uh, let's see, the microphone is yes, good. Um, so, I've been experimenting here with the snake game. Uh, here is the snake game. Should rename this, but uh, this is what it looks like now. Now the snake has a body. It's uh, three characters tall. And as you can see here, it, it moves kind of fast now because I, I was testing out different speed levels and stuff. But uh, you see there are three characters in the body. But when I eat an apple, it will become four characters if I can just... There, now you see it's four. And of course, now I haven't added more here to the game. Uh, the, we, we don't get a new apple here, but normally we would uh, a new apple would appear. Eating that, we would have five uh, uh, characters in the body. And it just stops when I hit a, hit a wall like this, we don't die or anything. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of things going on here uh, that we need to add to achieve this uh, uh, stuff. And I'm not sure uh, where, where uh, how far we get in this video. Another thing I've done here, as you can see, is I've created like this library and uh, moved all functions into their own file so we get a cleaner script. Uh, to work with because this this is getting complicated and here you can see some clues on uh, how I have achieved this I have been uh, uh, using some black magic uh, bit twiddling stuff here to to um, to do this but whatever we'll see how far we get let's reset remove all my changes I'm not sure how this will work now since I've created a bunch of directories and stuff but we'll see okay it didn't remove the directory. But I guess we can do that then. Or maybe not, because except for this group rate. Or you know what, Let, let's do it from the start. I will delete this guy here. Uh, and then we remove the directory as well. I hope I didn't do anything stupid there now. Yeah, okay, this is where we left the game in the last uh, video here, the last game video. The snake also, yeah, that's another thing in the in the other other one there uh, that the snake moves automatically. I just press one key to change direction. That's another thing we, we kind of need to add to make this game uh, what it's supposed to be. It also feels like well, it's uh, almost centered. I guess it should pu push it down one more here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, all right. So what do you think? Should we make that uh, refactoring business here and move everything into files? I think we should because it's getting, you know, I really don't like scrolling. <laughs> I don't know. And often like this init screen function, for example, that's complete, you know, I don't even have to see it. I just know it works and then it's nice to have it stuffed away in, in a directory. So the way we do this is uh, we cut this file here and then we create this lib directory. Uh, create a file called init screen. Uh, I like to name them like sh or bash, uh, but that's just because uh, then Sublime will automatically give it the correct uh, icon here. That That's like stupid, but uh, I just like to do that. And then I always add a shebang to these lib files, even if that is not needed either, but that's just to get the correct uh, syntax highlightings. Yet another text editor specific thing. So whatever, you get it. Uh, and then we just source this file here. Source uh, lib init screen dot sh the name of the file not the name of the of the function or anything the name of the file here and this should work now if we execute this now the game works uh, it means it have uh, 
loaded that file. It's sourced. The content of this this file is now placed here at this location. But if we uh, mistype this or or the file is not found, then it will not load it, of course. And now we can see we get some init screen command not found, and we can also see that we got the cursor here uh, next to the uh, it, uh, because that's one thing that init screen does. It hides the cursor, and you see, yeah, all kinds of weird stuff is is happening now because it didn't source this file correctly, but it didn't break the script completely, but it could. And now we can see we get this uh, stuff also because the the we we init the cleanup trap in the init screen function. Um, another thing is this only works because uh, uh, because um, we are in the same directory here. Uh, when we execute the script, uh, it will use this working directory will be the working directory of the script, and that's why it can find this lib directory. But if we would create a, a symbolic link here, or maybe let's rename this also level select here. Let's uh, rename it uh, to um, can call it snake. Yeah, let's do snake now. Okay, okay, snake sh. There it is, uh, and the same thing. Snake should should work here, no problem. Uh, but if we create a, a symbolic link, uh, symbolic. Uh, and then I always do this working directory snake.sh and then I put that in my path bin and we can call it just snake. I leave out the extension uh, file extension there like that and then we can uh, uh, open my bin directory which is probably crowded with <laughs> a lot of weird scripts here. But somewhere here is our snake, uh, uh, snake somewhere. There it is, snake. And my bin directory, that is also in my path. So even if I go wherever I, I want it in my, we can go here, uh, dot config slash uh, polybar, just as an example here. This is a completely different uh, directory now, but I can still execute snake now, which is in my path, a symbolic link to this uh, snake.sh script, you know. But now we, we get this uh, error again, that it cannot uh, find the uh, file we try to source here. Because now it, try it tries to look for this file lib in its screen. It looks for that in the current directory here. Right now it's the polybar directory, and you never know which uh, working directory it is, you know. So what we have to do here for this sourcing uh, library files like this, uh, we have to uh, know the path to the script itself. Uh, I have uh, shown you this before, but it's worth uh, repeating in my opinion. So I like to do this uh, double underscore to make it really short, clear that this is like a, a very <laughs> global uh, special variable, you know. And then we can call that script. Uh, and let's start by setting that to bash source zero. Then we can do this just to test this here. Echo script and then exit. Save. And if we do snake now. Should have exited the script there. Ah, 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 why do we have level select here? We moved this to. I thought we moved that file. Okay, okay. Okay, sorry. For some reason, it didn't remove this level select file. I think I had it open in Sublime, and then it uh, 
I accidentally saved over saved it or something. But now if we do snake, it should just echo the uh, directory here. Now we can see it echoes the path to uh, the script, but this path is to the bin directory where the symbolic link is, because that is what we executed here. We executed the symbolic link and that kind of works and that uh, will be uh, what bash source zero points to. This could also, uh, you can also use this. It's, it almost always works to do, do that as well, uh, to use dollar zero. But it's a little bit more safe to use bash source zero. Uh, but we don't want the path to my bin directory. We want the path to the actual uh, snake.sh uh, uh, location here. And to do that, we will use uh, read link, and then f to follow symbolic links. Uh, and then it wants us to quote this here. And now it prints the, the, the path to where this symbolic link uh, points to. And now we can easily get uh, the directory as well here. So deed is equal to script uh, trim everything from the end of that string to the last slash. And then if we print deed here, no, ah, double underscore there. And now it prints the directory. And this variable is what we will prefix our uh, source directives here with. Uh, and then it will work. Uh, it will source uh, files. Even if we execute it as a symbolic link from a different directory, it will always find the source like this. It's uh, important. And this is how you can uh, modulize, in quotation marks, uh, uh, an, a complicated bash script. Um, let's do this. Let's go to this directory and remove that level select uh, file. Uh, and let's add all these functions to the, the library instead. So we take play area here, take the whole function. Yeah, it's kind of a, it's the biggest function we got there play area dot sh bin bash paste that guy there whoops lib this is why i i kind of like a sidebar you know i could in instantly see there that this I, I created this file at the wrong location it's easy to move and stuff some people oh this is blows it's better to have a terminal interface the ide yeah good luck with that guys uh clean up lib clean up dot sh bin bash save we got the snake, we got the move function, lib move.sh. Oh, I already have that open. Okay, let's do this. Close other tabs, close without saving. Move.sh bin bash. Snake, game over, lib, game over, dot sh, bin, bash. So there, you can see it, it it's not that much, much work, you know, and it's, it's when you reach this point, when you get to about 200 lines or something of a script, it, it can be worth uh, considering if this is worth it, you know, and, and I really think it is uh, in, in this case. And then all we need to do here is uh, source all these files. So we got uh, init screen, clean up, game over, move, play area. And then we would just enter here, clean up here. And then we have game over. We have init screen, we have move, and we have play area. 
and now we should be able to execute Sneak and it uh, works uh, just as fine as it did when all this uh, stuff was uh, in the same file here. Clean up command not found. Ah, I misspelled uh, clean up there. Yeah, so so here here you can see some. God damn it! Now we kind of broke this. Uh, yeah, I get. Wow, this is weird now because um, we have ha, have a exit trap trying to execute a command, uh, and it does that on on uh, interrupt and exit and everything. I'm not sure I can. Uh, yeah, it's also terminate uh, here, so we cannot really. We have broken this uh, uh, thing. I don't think we can get out of this. We have to kind of find this process and kill it. So let's see if we can do this. Pgrep follow snake. There, I think that's enough. If we kill that kill, 11, 47, 87, two. There, killed, killed and killed. Okay, sometimes things like that happens when you mess this up. And that, that was also good because it shows here that it's very sensitive that we write this correctly. And every time we add a new file to our library, we have to add it in, in the correct manner here. Uh, and this block might grow and it gets inconvenient to uh, 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 handle this. So a much better way is to do this for file in deed slash star and notice here that the star have to be outside of the quotation marks here otherwise it will not expand and it will expand to all files in deed here um, do and then we instead do source file done then we can remove these guys we can comment them out here in case it doesn't work but it should work snake whoa line 7 source home bud bud lamps god damn it <laughs> ah deed lib of course there and maybe this is cleaner like that yeah now now i try to source the files in uh, the root directory so to speak and the only file there is snake itself so it kind of resourced it over and over again it got uh, really weird here but now it should work now it works perfectly fine and uh, if we would remove a file in our lib it would not be included of course and if we add a new now we can just add functions here by just adding uh, files to this lib directory so i kind of like this uh, uh, setup um, next up we also create a main function here, I'd like to do that, and we basically add everything here to the main function, and then we call main function here, dollar at, passing all arguments in case we have arguments, and that means also now that we can move this uh, crap here because it's kind of noisy. Uh, then we got the main function functionality at the top of the script uh, but the function is not executed you know be before it is called and it's called here at the bottom of the script uh, before we call the function we can source our uh, files so this script will also work and now you can see it's much cleaner uh, easier to work with but it have some drawbacks, you know. Uh, we have to kind of keep track now of uh, global variables across files and stuff when we are using them. And it's um, another thing is if you want to like uh, uh, install this uh, game or give it to someone else, you have to make sure that they have the same directory structure and stuff here, which is a bit inconvenient. Uh, but I, I think we can fix that. We, let, let's do it in the last uh, the series, video in this series or something. Uh, whatever. It, this is a good dev uh, environment now for us. So I think we can uh, 
commit to all these changes. Let's make sure we are in the correct directory. Git add everything. Git commit refactor added lib directory main function whatever there okay so I'm thinking that uh, we we remove the apple and the player position because uh, we can make them uh, automatic instead. I, I, I'm thinking that the player should always spawn uh, in the middle of the play area, horizontally like this. And then, yeah, uh, at some vertical place as well, like a specific location every time you start your game. We can automatically calculate the middle of the play area because you don't really want to, to get spawned in the corner like this. It's uh, I, I think it makes more sense to either spawn like here or maybe in, in the absolute center here uh, and then the apple uh, should uh, get should spawn at random locations and every time we eat the apple it respawns at the new random location that is not occupied by the snake itself so we can start with the player we can keep the apple for now uh, and maybe we will not even get to it in this video Uh, uh. And you see, we don't really have to change anything here now. That we remove the P, but we don't have to change the code here. And anyways, it will still store the other uppercase letters positions. It's it's fine, whatever. Uh, but we have to change stuff now in our main function here because I want to draw uh, this uh, three three player uh, apple or three player uh, character high three character player <laughs> uh, and i want to, want to draw it uh, in the center uh, of the play area in the center of the play area um, maybe we should do cx is equal to uh, pos starting x that's the uh, left edge of, of, of the play area but we want it in the center of the play area so that means uh, we want to add uh, the distance of um, pos and x minus pos start x that's the width of the play area right or is it yeah yeah it is uh, we divide that by two I'm a bit crazy with parentheses. I'm, I'm, I'm actually not good at math at all and I have just found that it's good to, to just put... May, I, I guess we could remove these two parentheses. I'm pretty sure that would work. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. It, it, it always gets weird when I start removing parentheses. So, and, and they don't, don't really do anything and they kind of clarify what's going on, you know. So this should be the center x position uh, in the middle of the play area. And then um, we could uh, use this for the current x here instead. Let's do cx. Uh, and then we could set uh, the current y position for now uh, to be um, pos and y. And, and y in the bottom uh, uh, right corner or the bottom of the play area. Uh, minus one meaning one line above the bottom so let's see how this looks now now it should automatically place this ö in the middle one uh, 
line up. And it does. It does. It doesn't play in it, place it here at the absolute bottom. This is EY. That is this line, you know, EY. But this looks like the center of, of, of the screen. Perfect. Uh, but now we get to the tricky part here. Um, we want to make this player now being three characters, a snake, you know. Uh, the snake have two important body parts, as all of us do, you know. It have the head and the ass. The rest is just in between stuff. But every time the snake moves, uh, that means that the head advance to a new cell uh, and the tail also advance to the last cell or whatever. What we do is we just advance the head and then we remove the, the, the last tail, you know, that, I don't know, whatever. And we will do this by putting this in an array. So. Um, we create an array here called underscore s for snake. Um, and then let's see. We start by adding the tail position. And now it gets weird here because we, we, we want to create an array uh, where each item in the array uh, holds a position on in this grid. But the problem is the positions are like have two values. It have an x coordinate and a y coordinate, and bash is uh, a bit limited when it comes to arrays and stuff because you cannot have multi-dimensional arrays. In many uh, programming languages, we could do like uh, uh, snake zero x holds the x position for the tail here for example like uh, 12 and then we have snake 0 y this meaning 0 here is the first uh, part of this array and and this could be maybe 5 and then we have the next part of the body could look like this you know here maybe it's the same x position but it's one uh, block above and and so on it makes it a lot easier to, to do things like this when you have multi-dimensional arrays. And this, this means that the zeroth uh, element here uh, actually contains another array with two elements, the x and y. I know it gets very weird talking about this and, and trust me, this video will get even weirder, but whatever. But we can, and, and we cannot do this in Bash because you cannot store uh, multiple, uh, an array inside another array element. You cannot do that. Uh, there are a couple of different approaches we can take here. One is to, instead of using an indexed array, we could use an uh, associative array where uh, instead of storing an uh, integer as the key name we, we store a string but the string can be a number <laughs> it gets weird you know and then we could store it like 12 colon 5 uh, or even do this 0 is equal to 12 colon 5 and now we have both uh, the coordinates in, in one value but it is a string and we have to do um, some string uh, manipulation on, on the data here every time we want to get the position and stuff and that is a, a, quite a bit more expensive than doing math operations uh, and I have just found that the most efficient but a bit clunky uh, way to do this is to um, is to use this bit uh, bit twiddling techniques that I have uh, found another way is uh, Let's say the, the playing area here, let's say this is 15 columns here. Uh, and that, that would mean that this first cell would be 0. And this last cell would be yeah uh, 14 then, I guess. And then the next cell here would be 15, 16. And then we get up to 28 would be the name of this cell. And then next cell here would just be 29 you know we could just number each of these cells and then uh, do some 
very easy math to calculate uh, which row uh, and column it that cell has. But that's also more expensive than the bit twiddling techniques here. So why not use them? And it's not that complicated actually. Uh, because what you can do when you use uh, 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 bit shifting and or bit twiddling or whatever you want to call it is that you can pack multiple numbers inside a single integer. Uh, so here I create a variable called p uh, and then we can make p be equal to uh, center x here. That is the x position. But if we do this, if we shift that uh, number, uh, and we can shift it, 16 is a bit overkill, but uh, we, we will make a 32-bit integer here, uh, and then whatever, this is fine. If we shift this uh, center x position 16 bits to the left, we will get a completely different number. And maybe we, c we need to do this here. Um, we can use basic calculator, BC. It's installed on your system. Input to BC uh, is uh, O base equal to semicolon. And then we can type a number here. Uh, let's just take one, two, three. Let's see what we get. Now we get the binary number here because O base, uh, meaning base two. Uh, I don't want to have a math lesson here because I'm really not the person who should give you such a lesson. But uh, binary numbers, they work because they are binary. It can only be one out of two by, you know. It can either be one or zero. That's the only numbers we got to work with in, in a, a base two uh, math thing. Normally, we are working with decimal numbers, you know, deca, Greek, meaning 10, 10 different numbers, base 10. So from zero to nine, that's what we are all used to. Uh, but if we instead only had two numbers, then we would get a, a, a a number looking like this. One, two, three would look like this in, in binary here. Uh, and in binary, it works like this. This first number is worth is one. Uh, so we have one at the moment now. Next number here, that's two. So, and then we have two plus one, that's three. Then we have uh, this uh, position is worth 4. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. This position is worth uh, uh, 4. But it's not the... Uh, there's no uh, value here, so we don't get it, you know. So we have 3 plus 6, 9... No, 3 plus 8, 11. Uh, 11 plus 16, uh, 27. I don't know why I'm doing this. 27. 27 plus 32. Uh, <laughs> 27, 32. 59. 27, 32. 59. Yeah. Uh, 59 plus 64, 123. Um, so what number do we get if we shift 123, 16 digits uh, or 16 positions to the left? 1, 2, 3, shift 16 positions to the left. Now we get this number. Uh, what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 8 million uh, 60,928. That is 1, 2, 3 shifted 16 
positions to the left. It's kind of weird, right? Uh, but if we look at this number uh, with our uh, bc command here, and then we just say 8060928, it will make kind of a lot more sense here. Because now it looks like this. This number here is the same sequence we have here. It's the exact same. You see that? And this is 16 positions here. Uh, 16 zeros, because that's what, what it uh, uh, adds if it doesn't have anything else uh, before that. And if we wanted to get the, the original number, you know, uh, 1, 2, 3, we could just shift it the other uh, to the right instead. No, this this is getting weird, but whatever. So we got this. But then we enter 80, 60, 9 to 8, and then we change the direction of the shift here. And that gives us 1, 2, 3. And now if we would look at uh, um, well, this number wouldn't show here, uh, because I I if we try to enter this um, thing... Uh, whatever. Let's do this. Remove that. If we would enter this, we would probably just get the same thing as here. Yes. But what we actually have here are uh, a bunch of zeros, uh, 16 zeros here before this, but a zero is worth nothing. So they, I know it's weird, Bit, bits uh, are kind of weird, but it's also very, very cool. And it is not that complicated. I, I highly encourage you to experiment a bit with this. It's just like, uh, if you don't know, if you know this, you, you're probably thinking that I'm very cringe right now. But if you don't know this, uh, I can tell you that there are like four or five different operations you can do here uh, to bits. Uh, these guys, now we are shifting, just moving... Uh, bits to the left or to the right in a number, so to speak. But you can do uh, like three other operations. You can do uh, bit bitwise and, bitwise or, and bitwise xor or whatever it's called, what, whatever. There are like a couple of these. And, and these different uh, operations are, they are like um, plus, minus, uh, mul mu multiply, divide you know it's just like learning a couple of new mathematical operations like that that only works for binary numbers and it's not that difficult to learn new operation operators and when you do it will open uh, a whole new universe of cool math things one thing i highly recommend is uh, creating a little function here i i got them as scripts uh, I think Tobin. Yeah, here I have a uh, Tobin. So here I've just taken this command here, uh, but replaced the number with dollar one. So I can just, if, if I want to see the binary representation of a number, I can just do Tobin 666, and then it gives me the binary. I also got from bin. And then you just change here O base to I base, meaning the input base is binary. And that means you can, um, you can, yeah, reverse it, so to speak, you know. From uh, bin 11, 111, 0, 1, 1, 2, 5. Okay. You see? These can be very useful when you're uh, trying to learn this uh, stuff, but... Uh, yeah, okay, but um, sure, we can we can shift here an X position, 16 positions to the left, uh, and then we would get a number looking something like this. 
But if we also want to add the y position, because then we got a bunch of zeros here, that we instead of just storing zeros, we could store some other value at this location uh, here. And that's where we store the y position. So, yeah, let's say we do this. Uh, let's say we have a variable here uh, with one, two, three. But then we shift uh, var 16 positions, positions. We don't need the quotes here, but whatever. Or what we do is the var is equal to this. And here you can write it like this. Uh, no echo. Or, or maybe let's not do that right now. So now var have this weird number, you know. If we also wanted to add uh, like a different number, let's say uh, let's take uh, yeah let's take six 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 here, the number of the beast. Uh, it's this binary representation here. Uh, if we want to pack that uh, at this location, we just do this var is equal to var or 666. Now, if we do echo var, we have a different number here now. But it's not that different. It's 8 million, see, blah, blah, blah. Um, but if we do 2 bin, on this number, we will see that here to the left we have one, two, three, this part you know, and all to the right we have six, 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 this representation. So now we actually have the two series here. But then there are some uh, zeros in the middle here, whatever. Um, if I want to uh, get the one, two, three part, the x position later here, all we have to do is um, shift to the right, you know, bar shifted to the right, 16 positions. This should echo one, two, three, and it does. But if we want to get the, the first um, number packed here, the first 16 bits, uh, then we will use a mask of uh, a mask consisting of 16 uh, ones. So from bin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Look, mama, I can count. Then we get this number six, five, five, three, five. So this number is equal to sixteen, uh, sixteen ones in binary, uh, in binary, you know. Uh, but it actually it looks like uh, something like this, you know, or it doesn't actually look like that. But if this would be a 32-bit number, it would be 16 zeros followed by 16 ones. And then we can use this number as a mask for our, our var number here, this thing here. Uh, and when, when we use this as a mask, then it will report all uh, positions where both uh, both positions are set to 1. So if we would mask this with this, it would report uh, 0, but 1, because here's a 1, 0, 1, because here's a 1, 1, because this is 1, this is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, yeah. and then the rest here would be zeros because uh, they would, you get it, maybe, maybe not. What this means is that we can do this echo var and 65535. This will do exactly that, and it reports. 666 the second the first part of this number and you can see here it's very fast this is extremely efficient uh, methods uh, to use this 
bit shifting stuff here because this is really uh, <laughs> how the CPU uh, works. You know, it, it just operates on on ones and zeros, and it's it, it's very happy when you uh, do these operations because it's. Uh, very little uh, translation work that this uh, CPU have to do when you do bit shift operations. Uh, and this is just one cool thing you can do with this. We, we will probably get back to this uh, later. One thing though is that it's kind of inconvenient to to do this when you want to do a mask here. Now we got this. Uh, this is a mask for 16 ones but how would a mask for example five ones look like then we have to like do this from bin doing ding 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 but there is like a, 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 a little sheet code we can use here and I don't got it in my top in the on the top of my head but here you can see I have created mask 16 is equal to <laughs> to this stuff I, I'm not even gonna try to explain it but we we it's we shift the opposite of a zero and then opposite of the uh, it's weird but this creates masks you know <laughs> this creates a mask of 16 ones and this creates a mask of four ones for example so let's use this and 16 uh, 16 uh, uh, ones here Th that means that this is the highest uh, number we can store here uh, for our X or Y position, 65,535. But that should be much more than enough for our little play area uh, uh, field here. And we can store two numbers uh, of this magnitude inside one single 32-bit integer, because that's what this really is, you know. We have uh, 16 bits here and we have 16 bits there together they become one single 32-bit uh, integer that doesn't make any sense uh, until you uh, unpack them like this I know this video weirdest ever but whatever let's copy this mask mask 16 so we got the X position here uh, and then we also want to pack uh, uh, the Y position and we could do that like P and uh, and the Y position I wanted that to be uh, 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 this now we got a variable here called P containing both the X and the Y position packed in this uh, manner here. Uh, we could write this uh, on a single line, I think. Uh, and it's not that long, so why not just do this, put this in parentheses and this closing there. This also works. Note here that we are using single uh, ampersand uh, and uh, you can also use this or the pipe character it means something completely different and also these redirection things they mean different things here completely different from from uh, normal behavior in bash you know but another thing that I should really point out is that sure this looks very very archaic and weird and strange you know but keep in mind that these operations are available in almost all programming languages i would say that these are are more consistent and common than regular expression is uh, across different languages so learning this in one place be it bash be it javascript be it c where, wherever you know you you will be able to use the same techniques uh, in many many different languages and since bash is such a slow and clunky language knowing these techniques uh, makes it so that you can do for example games uh, much easier uh, whatever okay we want to store three of these positions here now in uh, our s array here so we just store 
p uh, it wants us to quote it we could actually do this declare i p and then it shouldn't complain here oh, maybe it does whatever okay so now we got one position and then we create another one where we uh, that's one uh, y position above do this then we do this again there now we have stored three different positions here and you see of course we could just uh, instead of using p here we could manually add this here and we could even d make a little loop here if we wanted to maybe we should do that uh, snake length is equal to three um, four For uh, 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 man, I really lost my trailer. Because this, we probably want to have this as a setting variable or something. Let's do a while then instead. While. I is less than snake or we could do this we could do this sorry sorry for I is equal to zero I is less than or I is equal to one I is less than snake or less than or equal to snake length I plus plus do s underscore s plus equals this stuff what we change this to i done okay this should do the same thing and now we could test here doing different uh, 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 length um, but now we also want to, to, to print the character here three times uh, once one for each of these uh, uh, positions and I guess we could do this do an op is equal to nothing make this uh, easier let's do this um, y is equal to this now let me just set y there we store the position, but we also add uh, the character immediately to our output string here. Um, op plus equals this y c x h player. And then we don't have to do that here. And here we do op plus equals apple and then we do echo e n o p right a lot of weird stuff going on here now but now i think if we execute our snake game didn't work got the apple didn't print anything here
you know, I got a new refrigerator uh, because the old one was making a lot of noise. This one is almost worse. Uh, kind of sucks, but what can you do, you know? What's going on here now? 4i is equal to 1. i is less than or equal to snake snake length. Yes, i plus plus. So this should loop three times. i should be pos ei minus one. Yes. I don't know why this isn't working. Let's do this. Um, echo n. Um, teapot lines zero x y c x y read r s n one. Ah, it's because we define the player variable. God damn it. Okay, now it should work. There, we got a three character high snake. Um, and we got the position for each of, of, of the element in this body stored in this element here. The first element in the array snake here, which uh, currently is uh, S0, uh, that holds some strange number, you know, uh, like this. But the first element is uh, ending y position minus 1. So the first element is here, and that is the tail of the snake. The second element, 1. That is uh, the, mid the middle section, and the last element, 2, is the head. So the head is always the last uh, element of the snake. And arrays in Bash have this uh, nice feature that you can write minus 1, that will, always, that, that will be the last uh, element. No matter what number it has, it will always uh, be the last element. Sadly, there is no function to uh, get the first element. Right now it is zero, but uh, if it isn't zero, then we, we have to do some other stuff to figure out which uh, the first element is. Um, okay, but now if I, if I start moving here with the arrow keys, so it, it just moved the first one there because current x is set to be the tail here and uh, it's, it actually moves this cur x now. We will not need this cur x anymore. Instead we will take the positions from the array. Uh, so we can actually, actually remove this. And then we go to our move function. Uh, and here we set x and y to be current x and current y. But since we have changed this now, we instead do uh, uh, snake minus one. Uh, that will hold the position for 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 the head. But now we cannot just set that to x because it, uh, as you know, it holds two uh, uh, two numbers. So instead we do this 
shift that 16 bits that will give us the x position use uh, mask 16 will give us the y position and now this will be current x now we should move the head instead now okay Okay, now nothing works. Um, feels like I missed something here now. Mask 16. See, this is one of the issues with uh, dividing a script like this. You, you kind of lose all your shell check, it gets a bit messed up and, and things like that, but whatever. X is this, Y is that. Ah, we shouldn't use AND here, we should use OR. No. Yes. Okay, now it's super weird here. Um, but something happening. And the thing is, we kind of we don't we, we change this cur x cur y we shouldn't use them you know instead what we do here now is um, we uh, increment depending on the uh, uh, position we are moving but then we do something different here uh, we move the head uh, advance head but i guess we only do this stuff now we can move this into this test here. We advance the head uh, if we are not trying to move into a wall, you know. And what I mean by advancing the head is that we add a new element to our snake array here with the new positions because now we have changed uh, uh, the positions here. it from here you know uh, 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 paste it there but now we pack x and y the variables we got here and here and we just set this to be y and or no we don't we do, do that here Uh, so this will, will print the head at the new position. But we also want to remove the last element, or the first element in the array, the, the tail. Uh, pop tail. And here it gets a bit weird, you know, because the first time we know that it is zero. Uh, and if we want to pop that, we, I, I want to remove that element from the snake array, you know. Uh, so, and that means uh, we will uh, unset s0. But the next time it will be, uh, the tail will then be uh, s1. So we either have to keep track here of how many tails we have popped. And I have also thought about this a bit because I think this will make it so, because an array in bash uh, cannot be... Uh, unlimited but i think the limit is 30 a 32 bit number here and i think that is uh, i don't know uh, like a couple of millions uh, but that will be the number of moves you can do uh, then the game will kind of crash this is something i haven't really thought about uh, how to work around but i'm sure there is but for now we can do this uh, and i think I, I like to do it like this uh, there is no way to figure out what the name, uh, and by name I mean the number that stores the, the first position in the array. There is no way to find out the name of the key here uh, in a sane way, except for looping the whole array here. So 4p in s0. 
at like that. I, I really don't like this. I wish there were uh, a better way. Maybe, yeah, yeah, this, of course. This is good. I haven't thought about this. We can use this method. Uh, zero colon one. Because you can use this substring notation on a race uh, as well if you're using the at here. And now this will only contain the first uh, uh, element. Or this will not work now when I think about it. Because we have to know the name. We have to know the name of, of the array. So then we use exclamation mark here. Do. Done. Uh, unset underscore s dollar p an unset is kind of weird it is it works a bit like a val so you are recommended to use single quotes around anything you are unsetting and it is fine to use a dollar here it will expand to uh, to the name here of the array element we want to unset uh, but we also want uh, the x positions here, x and y position of uh, the tail here. We could even store them in tx and ty is equal to sp here. We need that because we need to print a space at the location of the tail. And then we unset set it and then we just break out of the loop. So. So this loop is only needed because we need to, to make sure that we take the first element in the array. Problem here is when the longer snake we get, the longer this, it, it, this will expand to a list of all names in the array. And that will make, uh, have a small, small impact on performance here. But even if the snake would cover all each and every cell here, it wouldn't be more than uh, like 100 maybe 200 uh, uh, names long here but it is something uh, and i wish there were uh, a better way to do this uh, but right now i cannot think of any and you have probably no idea what i'm doing here anyways uh, pop tail add this i wonder if this doesn't work you know let's try There we got the snake, I'm pressing up. Yeah, we're moving the head, but we're not moving anything else. Uh, it doesn't work. Yeah, 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 OP cur X, what am I doing here? It should be TY TX, okay. No, the snake is moving all three uh, uh, guys here are following and it's very easy now to make it so that even if this is a little bit dirty we, we might change it later uh, but when we eat an apple instead of winning the game we want the snake to become uh, one character longer you know for every apple we eat we uh, the body extends and that means that we only do this popping of the tail we do that uh, whenever we move, move the snake except if we move onto an apple if we do that I guess we could do this if the position we're moving to is an apple then do something else we pop the tail What we actually will do here when we eat an apple is uh, spawn a new apple and increase the score and, and all of that. And now, now there will be no game over here in our game. Can remove some crap here. Like that. Snake. Moving the snake. Eating the apple. There. Now it didn't pop the tail. It just ate the apple. And that mean, means we, we now have four elements in the array. Okay, and I guess this is like the complicated, uh, maybe, maybe not, uh, part of, of this game. 
And there are of course uh, things we need to do here. Now if I try to move uh, the snake upwards, or let's, let's keep track of the head, you know, you see the head? If I do this, or this formation here, this is the head. If I move this down now, that should mean that we should die, but now it, uh, I, I'm not sure what happens. But yeah, it kind of moved into itself and it got weird, you know. We have some work to do, we have to um, do a test for that as well here. Not just testing for a wall, we also test for uh, the snake itself and stuff, you know, to, to see when we are dying. Yes, we take that in the next video. This one got really weird here with the bit shifting techniques and, and whatnot, but whatever. Thank you for watching everybody. Have a great day. Bye.